everybody, Dave Thomas here again, and today I am building the classic Estes model rocket kit, the Alpha. This kit has been around probably almost as long as Estes has. I remember building my first one of these when, uh, say, 45 years ago. Um, so it's been around for a long time. Now, I'm going to warn you ahead of time here that I am going to be shooting this video specifically for a class in which we have a short time to build it. So, unlike in other videos, I am not going to go into um, fin sealing and treatment and things like that, as well as painting and finishing and all that kind of stuff. This will just be for the basic build. Alright, so I'm going to open up our instructions here and just do a quick check to make sure we have everything. Okay, so here's our fin material, nose cone, little mini catalog, we don't need that right now. Uh, we do need the body tube, and then inside the package here, we have our shock cord, engine retainer clip, parachute, Okay, launch lug, motor mount, and centering ring here. Okay, so comparing that to everything here, it looks like we have everything. Uh, also to include the self-stick decals there. So I'm going to clear this away and we'll get started. Now before we get into the kit build itself, you will need a few other items here. Uh, first you're going to need some sort of wood glue or white glue. Uh, the nice thing about wood glue is it tends to dry faster and stronger. White glue gives you a little bit more working time. And so I would go with whatever you have on hand. There's no need to go out and buy one particular glue or the other if you don't have it. You just need one or the other of them. Right? You'll need a ruler of some sort. Um, I prefer metal ones because you can use them as a cutting edge. Uh, a hobby knife some fine sandpaper between uh, 150 and 220 grit, some form of a pencil, I prefer mechanical pencils but a plain old number two pencil works fine, and then this is optional, this is a snap swivel that you would find in the fishing department of uh, department stores like Walmart or Target or any place like that, um, and I like to use these to attach the parachute to the nose cone. Now you don't need to and the instructions show you how to do it without one, but I really like to have this because it allows me to interchange parachutes or to store the rocket without the parachute installed. But that's up to you. Now according to our instructions, our first task is to sand the fins. And so we'll just leave them in its stock like this. Um, if for some reason your fins have, have already come out, sometimes it happens during shipping and such, then don't worry about it. You can either place them back in loosely or sand them individually. And here, um, I'm going to use this sanding tee. Uh, you can also use a sanding block, or if you need to, just use the sandpaper in your fingers. Um, the advantage of having a block or a tee means you get a nice flat surface here. But the first thing we're going to do is simply sand this. Whoops. And you can see how fragile that is. Sand this along the grain, lightly. And this is just to remove any raised areas. Right, but always sand in the same direction as the grain, and this will give you a much finer and smoother finish. It doesn't take a lot there. And then we'll just flip this over. All, right, and all my fins are trying to come apart. If yours do, do this as well, don't worry about it. You can just do this to each fin. Once you've got that done, um, if they haven't already parted for you, just take your hobby knife here and quickly cut through the little nubs that are left. Um, and then the stuff that's left over here, they actually give us quite a bit. Um, as you continue in rocketeering, you'll probably start developing a junk box full of old balsa, uh, which I do as well. That way it gives me materials for future repairs 
or for custom rockets. Okay, and I'm just going to do my last one here. Alright, and I'll put that one in the scrap box as well. So the next thing we're going to do is simply sand off those little nubs. And here you can do it with a, a sanding tee, um, or you can do it by putting your sandpaper here on a flat surface. And what I'm doing here is lining up all of my fins like this, and I can just take that whole block, once it's even there, and just drag it across the sandpaper a few times and that will uniformly smooth them. Now, you may notice this brown color. This is from the laser cutter that's used to cut out the fins. And so what I like to do is just give it, sand it just enough to remove that brown color. It's a little bit of soot. Okay. So just like that, all right, and we've still got that. Those little holes are supposed to be there. Don't worry about them. Okay, now the, the next thing is to round the leading edges. And so if we were to look at this on the rocket, this is called the root edge, and it's the, the part that's going to get glued to the rocket tube like this. All right, the leading edge is the one that's facing forward. And your grain in the balsa wood here should always be parallel to the leading edge. So if you're sticking this on in some other way, let's say I put it on like this, okay, which kind of looks cool, but now my uh, grain is parallel to the root edge. And this is more likely to fracture when stresses are across the grain here. It'll break along the grain. We don't want that. The strongest it can be is when the grain is along the leading edge. And that's what we want. So make sure you orient your fins like that. And then we're just going to round off the corners here to give it some partial streamlining. And here just use your sandpaper. And I just start by rounding each edge off. And if you look at it from the tip edge, which is furthest from us, and from the root edge here, you'll start to see in cross-section that it's rounding over. And that's what we want. And then I'm just going to kind of round back and forth here a few times. Uh, and these are really thin fins, so you don't need to do it very much. Okay, and so I can come back here, look at the fin and cross section. Okay, and once you've got that, that's all you really need. Um, you may learn in other kits that you can also uh, put kind of a knife edge on the trailing edge. That gives it even more streamlining. Uh, but this is the, the single most thing you can do to improve the streamlining of the fin is by simply rounding over that leading edge. Okay, Doing more to it will give you a little bit more performance, but you start giving way then to weakening the fins as well. So this, this is a compromise between a strong fin and a fairly fast fin, if you like. My fins are all sanded, and now the next part of the instructions is to assemble the motor mount and then mount that into the body tube itself. So here we're going to need this tube, this clip, and this centering ring. Right, I'm going to set my fins aside here for now. Okay, so according to the instructions, we need to make a few measurements here on our body tube. So first of all, we need, here, I'm going to mark this. I'm going to mark one end as aft, which is the back end of the rocket. And that way we don't get confused about where our markings are going. 
Okay, so from the aft end, we need to mark, first of all, 10 millimeters, or one centimeter, or if you're not metrically inclined, about three-eighths of an inch. Okay, so I'm going to make a mark right here. Okay, and then we're going to make another mark at two and a half centimeters, or about one inch from the aft end. And then a third mark at 6.4 centimeters, or about two and a half inches. So this is going to be way up here at the forward end, like this. Okay. Now, um, I'm going to extend these a little bit on either side for the lower two, because this one we're going to cut a notch into, like this. Okay, and we just need a notch that's about three millimeters wide, or about an eighth of an inch. And then we're going to put the right angle here of the engine retainer clip into there. Okay, and this is why I needed to extend the lines on either side, is because this clip tends to eclipse them a little bit. And then, without, I haven't glued anything yet, but now this centering ring will go on over the tube and the clip right down to that middle mark. Okay, and then our last mark there, this one down here, is going to mark where everything will go into the aft end of the rocket. Okay, so we don't need that mark yet. What we do need to do now is get our glue. Okay, um, and you can do this a couple of ways. In the instructions, it's showing putting this on first and then putting a fillet of glue around here and around here. Okay, and that's fine. I like to make mine a little bit stronger. And to do that, I'm going to move this up. And I'm going to put the fillet of glue that they asked for, but I'll put it up high here. Right, and then very quickly, I'm going to shove that down. Now, the reason you have to do this quickly is it, the glue makes it very sticky. And if you don't get that down quickly enough, you may end up with it in the wrong position. Okay, If this is your very first rocket, do it the way the instructions show. And go ahead and put this into position and then put your fillet in. Now, once we have the fillet here, then you just take your finger and move that around. All right, and then this excess glue you can put on the top and also make a fillet. And then you can add some glue to it if you need to. Okay. Just like that. Now, I don't want to have a tissue or a rag or a paper towel handy here. We don't want anything up here on the outside of that centering ring. Okay, so now I'm going to let this uh, dry for a little while. Now while my motor mount is drying, our next step is going to be to mark the body tube for the fins and the launch lug. And for that we'll need this fin marking guide. Now this piece and this piece over here, which is the shock cord mount, um, we'll need to cut out. Now if we look back on its other side, there's nothing important there, but if you don't want to cut up your instructions, just make a photocopy of this and cut that out. Here you can use scissors, um, or I'm just going to use my hobby knife and my ruler. Either one's fine. Alright, and we need to cut out the whole thing, including, including the gray hatched area there. That actually is part of the guide. Okay. All 
All right, and now we need our body tube here. And just like I did on the motor mount, I'm just going to make a little notation here. This is the aft end. And then you're going to want a small piece of tape handy. And now this paper just wraps around here. And what we're going to do is line it up so that we cover the gray hatched area and align these two marks here. All right, so if you don't completely cover the hatched area, that's fine, as long as those lines are aligned. We like aligned lines. All right, I'm just going to put my tape on here. Okay, now be careful that you don't slide this up and down or around as you're doing it. And now I'm just going to make a little mark at each of the lines here. Now this one that says launch, uh, LL is for the launch lug. And I'm going to go ahead and make a little notation of that as well. Right, and then just go through and mark each line. All right, and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side of the guide. Okay. Now, according to our instructions, our lines need to be at least Let's see here. Well, it looks like they're just connecting it between the two. Um, and then the launch lug base is going to be 4.4 centimeters from there. Okay. So what we do here, um, this is showing using a door frame. And so you just place the, the body tube here up against the door frame after you've removed the marking guide. All right, and then you make a line between your two hash marks there. And all of these should be long enough, um, but I'm going to go ahead on my launch lug line here. I'm going to mark it again on the other side. Okay, so for the fin lines, you can just connect the two and go all the way down to the aft end. Um, for the launch lug, go ahead and bring it up a little bit farther. Now, I don't have a door frame that I can fit underneath my camera. What I have is this. And this is made by Estes as well. This is a tube marking guide. And basically it's a whole bunch of straight edges at different depths. And so here I can pretend that I have a door frame of the proper size. Okay, and I just got to find the proper size. There we go. Okay, so let's see if I can tilt this up where you can see it. All right, so these are my first two fin lines. And I'm just going to draw a line between them all the way down to the base. Okay, another fin line there. And then I have my launch lug line. I'm just going to extend this about halfway up the body tube. It doesn't have to be exact. And then my last fin line there. Okay, and then one more measurement I'm going to make here is for the launch lug. So if we come back to our instructions here, um, it shows here at step five of the tube marking to make a mark at one and three quarters inches from the aft end or 4.4 centimeters. So going along, here we go. All right, so it's faint here, but this is my launch lug line. 
so at 4.4 centimeters it's right there so I'm just going to make a little cross mark here and this is where the aft end or base end of my launch lug will go eventually after marking my tube I'm coming back to my fins here for just a moment and here I'm just going to use my fine sandpaper once more and give them just a little bit more sanding now that they're free from the stock. And this is just to smooth them out a little bit more. As, as I said at the beginning of this, um, I am not going to treat the fins with any sanding sealer or other finish that more experienced rocketeers often do. Okay? And there are many times, I'm a very experienced rocketeer, I don't do it anyways. I just don't want to put the time into it. It kind of de de depends upon your patience level and also how fine you want them to look. Okay, and then one more time, I'm going to check my edges here. My leading edge is rounded. My other edges are all square. And then, again, especially my leading edge here, I want to make sure that there are no protrusions or bumps or anything. Now, the little hole here is just a reminder that this is the root edge. It actually doesn't serve any structural purpose. And we'll cover it up um, with a glue fillet a little bit later on. Now, according to the instructions, our next step is to glue on the fins and the launch lug. I'm going to do this in a little bit different order and put in the motor mount first. And the reason I like to do this is to help make sure that if I slip or something putting the engine mount in, I don't break a fin off. Okay. Um, if you want to put your fins on first, you can do that, but you do have a, a little bit increased risk of fin breakage uh, as you're putting this together. Okay. So what I'm going to do is take all of my sanded fins here, put those aside, come back to my motor mount, which has been drying, and then here's our body tube, aft end here, aft end here. Now, I haven't glued anything yet, but this is going to fit in like this. And that last mark we made that we haven't done anything with, that's going to be where we mount the motor, uh, motor mount tube inside there. So we'll push it in until it's flush with that marking. Here again, we're going to use some wood or white glue. Right, and the best way to do this is to use some sort of an applicator. Okay, so you could just use uh, a little scrap piece of balsa. You could use a wood coffee stirrer like this one. Um, I like to use these things. that They are uh, essentially oversized Q-tips. And even regular sized Q-tip or other brand of cotton applicator works as well. So according to the instructions, we need to put a bead of glue around the inside of the tube. And that has to go in 3.8 centimeters or one and a half inches. So what I'm going to do here, all right, so I'm going to find that measurement here on my ruler. All right, put my applicator there, and I'm going to put my thumb at the distance. All right, now I'm going to take my wood glue here. I'm taking the cap off so I can just get this cotton applicator all nice and gluey. And again, if this is your first time to ever do this, I would suggest using white glue because you got a little bit more working time. Uh, I'm using wood glue, though. and I'm, Now I'm going to stick this in okay, to my thumb hits, bring it up to the side, and now I'm just going to coat the tube there. So that when I'm done, I'm not having to push this all the way through glue that I might have started at the edge. It'll be further up. Now the other thing I'm going to do is align my engine hook with the launch lug line, okay, which is this one here. So now I'm just going to put that in there push it forward until I get to that marking line there and now I'm going to twist it back and forth just a little bit and this helps seat the glue 
All right, and now I'm going to let that dry for a few minutes, and then we'll put the fins on. Okay, my engine mount is dry enough to work with again, and so coming back to our instructions, okay, we need to apply the fins here, and something that's a little bit strange, okay, um, is that for the launch lug, they actually show doing a little bit of sanding on the launch lug and on the area where it's going to go on the rocket. And a lot of experienced rocketeers uh, have learned how to do this on fins as well. So even though it doesn't show us in this, I'm going to go ahead and do this. And just take your sandpaper here, and what we're going to do is sand along our fin lines here. And just to give an idea of how much we need to do, so I'm going to put the fin here like this. All right. And we don't need to do a lot of depth here. All I'm going to do is just sand along the line. Just give it a few strokes. And what this is doing is it's removing the gloss from the glassine layer over the cardboard. And this will help make the fins um, attach better. The glue will attach better to them. Okay, so I can do the same thing here. Okay, now for my launch lug line, remember that's coming up this way. So I'm going to come up here about the length of a launch lug. Alright, and then another fin here. Okay, so that's just a little bit of prep. <clears throat> Now, according to the instructions, they want us to put a layer of glue on the root edge, let it dry for a minute, um, obviously to make it tacky, and then to add another layer over that and attach it to the rocket. Now, way back when I first started in rocketry, a different technique was used, and I don't know why it's fallen out of favor with kit builders and such, because um, it works really well. So what I'm going to do here is take my glue, and I'm going to put a thin layer of glue on my root edge here. Now a lot of beginning rocketeers want to use too much glue. All right. In this case, we just want a fine film here, nice and even. All right, and what I'm going to do here is now I'm going to attach the fin along my line, squish it down like that, and I'm going to pull it straight back off. So that now I have a thin film of glue on either side. And I'm going to let this set still for 30 to 60 seconds, let it get tacky, and then put it back on. All right, 30 seconds has gone by, and now I'm going to put my fin right back where I had it here. But now the glue has partially dried and become tacky, and it makes it stick better. All right, so now I need to check my alignment. First of all, I want it perpendicular to the tube, and also make sure it's going straight down the length of my fin guideline there, and it is. Now here's the worst part, you need to be patient. Okay, Let this fin dry for at least 20 minutes before you go on to the next one. Okay, For the next two fins you're going to do the exact same thing. And I will finish this off camera and come back when I have all three fins on. While my fins are drying, I'm going to skip to the back page of the instructions here and work on the nose cone and the parachute. So the nose cone here has a little bit of flash in here and this just flashes excess plastic from the molding process. So I'm going to take my hobby knife and gently cut through there. Now what we don't want to do is cut all the way through this part. Okay, So we're making an eyelet here. Okay, I'll 
also be sure to make sure that your fingers don't get in the way of the blade. Okay, and you can just pop that out. Okay, if you need to, you can trim off any excess here. Just again, be careful that you don't cut through the eyelet itself. All right. Now, as you feel over this, um, you may notice a ridge here. Okay, and that's also left from the molding process. As I mentioned earlier, I'm not going to go into any super fine um, detailing here, but if you find that this ridge is really annoying to you, you can take some fine sandpaper or ultra fine sandpaper, at least 220 grade, uh, and gently sand that down. Now as you do that, I would then recommend sanding the entire nose cone so you get a uniform finish there. And if you're planning on painting the rocket, especially the nose cone, it's a good idea to sand it anyway. So here I am going to go ahead and give this a light sanding. And I'm going to go all the way around the nose cone. And what this is doing, in addition to taking down those ridges, is that it makes the surface easier for the paint to adhere to. also going to be a little bit of a valley along that seam too and that's harder to fill. Um, the spray on primer that you use for your nose cone can help fill that. Uh, you can also use if you have it this stuff which is plastic uh, body putty for models and if you want to know more about that check out some of my other um, rocket kit builds. I'm not going to use it on this one. Okay, so once you've got that knocked down as much as you can, um, then you may also want to give it an additional sanding with some 400 grit sandpaper. It typically tends to be black like this. Uh, you can wet sand this, um, so if you just dip your sandpaper in some water, it's meant to do that. And that will give you an even finer finish. Now, what I'm looking for is just to get rid of any sanding grooves there um, while still retaining enough roughness. And it's not going to feel really rough to your fingers, but to the paint it will. So you have enough roughness there for the paint to adhere well. Okay. Now if you don't want to do all this sanding um, and you're going to paint it anyway, it's probably not a big deal. This is a polystyrene plastic and it tends to bond to paint relatively well. Other nose cones that are made out of polyethylene or polypropylene have a harder time binding paint, and so you have to do more sanding to it. All right, now that we've got that, um, we will also work on the parachute here. So I'm just gonna slide, slip that open. Be careful you don't actually cut the parachute. And then just unfold this. All right, so you should have a hexagon here, and the parachute shroud lines are already attached as three loops. And so the first thing I like to do is just gather all those loops around one finger here. And then I'm going to find the middle of the parachute with my other fingers on the other hand and just pull that taut. All right, so over here I've got it looped around my finger. Down here I am holding to the middle. And if everything goes well, all of the corners there should be pretty close to each other. And they are. 
Okay. Now, if you want to do this the way that is shown in the instructions here, you will take those loops, put them through, okay, and then go ahead and grab them on your finger again. Now here it's showing putting the parachute through these loops, and that ties a knot through it. The easier way is you put the nose cone through the loops and bring them around like that, and it does the exact same thing. It's just a lot easier to handle. Okay, so this is the way you want to go without the snap swivel, then you just pull this taut. Now, I don't want to do that, so I'm going to leave it loose here, put it back, okay, and I'm going to go through and find all my loops again. All right, and also find my middle once more. And now, I'm going to pinch these down and kind of fold them so they're nice and tight. And now I'm going to take my screw eye here and I'm going to put my bunched up loops through the swivel end of my snap swivel. I think I said screw eye. It's not a screw eye, it's a snap swivel. Okay, and I'm going to open up those loops again. Now just like I showed you, you could put the nose cone through those. In this case, I'm going to put the entire snap swivel through. So I'm just going to guide it through like this. Okay, and I'm going to bring that loop down and then pull it tight. And now it's looped around the snap swivel there. All right, check and make sure I'm still relatively uniform. Okay, close enough. A little bit off, but that's all right. And now here, I'm going to put just a little tiny dab of glue on my knot and work that in. And this is just going to help keep it from coming unknotted once more. Okay, so now when I am ready to fly, I open up the snap part. And I clip that on to my nose cone and close it up. Now when this is finished, there will be a shock cord attached to here that attaches the nose to the rest of the rocket. And it's ready to go. Okay. Now, as far as snap swivel sizes, they come in lots of different sizes. And any of them are sufficient for these types of model rockets. Relatively low power, really lightweight. Uh, what's going to be critical is getting one that the snap part will fit into the eyelet here. And so depending on what size of nose cone and which kit you're using, you may need to get something that might be bigger here than what I've got, simply because you need a bigger snap. My fins are mostly dry at this point. They're still not completely structurally sound. But here I want to go through, I'm just going to rotate this around. And we should have pretty uniform distance between them, and they should all be perpendicular to the tube. So this is looking pretty good. Uh, the next part I can do is the launch lug. Okay, so that's this little straw-like guy here. And just like we did with the tube for the fins, I'm also going to just give this a little bit of sanding on one side to make it rougher and easier to stick. Okay, now here, you don't have to worry too much about getting the glue pre-tacky because there's not a lot of force being imparted onto this. Right, and now, I'm just going to set this at my mark along the launch lug line there. Right, and now, just like I did with the fins, I want to make sure that this is in line with my guideline there. And then you can also look down it, kind of like a gun sight, and make sure that it is in line, okay, which it appears to be. And now I'm going to set this aside once more to let it dry. 
Now, I don't see a place for it in the instructions, um, but it's a good idea to, to apply glue fillets to the fins and to the launch lug once they have dried. And what this will do is reinforce the fins, making them stronger, and also help make it a little bit more aerodynamic. So what I'm going to do here is take my glue, and I'm just going to put a bead right in the corner here, between the fin and the body tube, and then I just take my finger and spread that evenly in. And what this does is it rounds out the interior of this joint between the tube and the fin. And that makes it more aerodynamic. Okay, and then I'm going to do the same thing over here on the facing fin. Okay, and here I'm going to do the other direction just because I have more glue there. Okay, and if you want, you can uh, use the glue to fill in those little holes as well. Alright, and then let this dry horizontally. So you can do two facing fins at a time, and then once that's dried, at least to the point where it's skinned over, you can go on to the next set of facing fins and so on. Uh, don't put this up on either end as it's drying because gravity will pull the fluid glue down and you'll end up with a big bulge at one end of your fillet or the other. So again, just use a little bit of patience here and you'll get a, a nice result. So I'm going to go off camera here, let this dry, put on the other fillets, and then come back. All right, I've applied fillets all the way around the rocket and the glue is still drying, but it's skinned over, so it's not going to move on me. And I've done all the fins and also the launch lug there. And I've got a little bit of glue there that may or may not dry correctly. And if you have a problem with your uh, fillets, you can always overlay it with some more glue later. I'm going to let this continue to dry. And next we're going to install the shock cord. And so we'll need this little piece here that we'll have to cut out of the instructions. <clears throat> All right, and once again, if you don't want to ruin your instructions, you can Make a, carbon, or a photocopy of that carbon copy. Man, am I dating myself. All right. <clears throat> now we'll take the shock cord here. And this is going to be laid across at a little bit of an angle like this. The 2 and the 3 section of the shock cord mount. And so now what I'm going to do is put some glue on here. You can be fairly generous with the glue. Okay, I'm going to reposition my shock cord on here. And again, I want this at a little bit of an angle. If you run it straight down, when we go to fold this, it'll fold it directly on top of the shock cord, and that's going to cause it to bulge up more. And we really don't want to do that. All right, and this is going to get messy, so I have some tissue or paper towel ready. All right, now we're just going to fold each number on to the next. So one over the two, and just kind of squish the glue in there. Okay, right, two over the three. And now if I move this a little bit, the folded part of the shock cord will now lay against it, not on top of it. Okay, and make sure you clean up any glue there on your work surface. All right, now I'm going to take this and again kind of squish the glue around inside it. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to put a bit of a bow in it so that the shock cord is at the, 
the top of the arch, so to speak. Looks like that. <clears throat> okay, and then we're going to stick this down inside the body tube. Now this needs to go down at least an inch and a half um, so that it does not impinge upon the shoulder of the nose cone here. And in my opinion, the further down you can get this, the better. So if you have long, skinny fingers, this is particularly a good thing for you to do. If you have a friend who has long, skinny fingers, you might talk them into doing this. All right, so I'm going to add some more glue on here. And I'm going to make a nice uniform film all over this. We really don't want it to have dry gaps because we want this to become nice and completely bonded to the inside of the tube. Okay, so now I'm going to set the tube like this. I'm just going to slide this in at this point. I'm not trying to glue it yet. All right, I'm going to go down as far as I can. All right, and checking down inside there. I think you can just see it. All right, so I'm going to bring that down more. So at least an inch and a half longer if you can. And now I'm taking my finger and squishing it down against this edge. So I'm going to hold that part of the rocket. And now I'm using my finger to squish all that glue into contact and flatten the shock cord mount against the inside of the body tube as much as possible. Okay, let's see if we can get some inside light there. Kind of. Alright, so that's attached there. Okay, and then our last step construction-wise, is to tie the shock cord onto the nose cone here. Now, if you're planning on painting the nose cone separately, you can wait on this step until you're done painting it. Right. But here, I'm going to tie a double knot. Okay, I'm going to leave mine a little bit loose here because I do want to paint this at, an, uh, at a later time. All right, but if you're ready to do this for real, ready to launch, pull this nice and tight in both directions and then put just a little bit of your wood glue or white glue onto the knot and work it in. Okay, and then... If you have not already attached your parachute, this is where this goes on. Okay, so I have my parachute on there. Um, once you get your knot down here, if you've got more than a quarter inch of this free part hanging out, go ahead and cut that off. Um, you don't want to cut it off completely or the knot may come undone. But if you've got more than about a quarter of an inch or about five millimeters there, it could get stuck up here between the body tube and the shoulder and if that happens it may have so much friction that the ejection charge will not push out the nose cone and the parachute. Okay, But structurally that's the end of this kit. Um, what you want to do with it in terms of paint or other coloration, the decals here I'm going to leave that up to you, and I am not going to include it on this video. So I hope you had fun building this kit. Have a good successful launch, a safe recovery, and you'll see me in my next video.